on to Bishop 4, right? Yes. The Queen's Gambit broke all the records by becoming the most popular miniseries on Netflix. What does it mean? The Beth Harmon fan club, played by Emma's Anya Taylor-Joy, is growing by the day, with viewers coming up to watch her chess matches in droves. Welcome to The Trends. Today, we're going to discuss The Queen's Gambit, the series miracle of 2020. Specifically, we will answer the most common question everyone keeps asking. Is The Queen's Gambit based on a true story? Are there any references to real chess players? So make sure to watch till the end. You will be amazed how detailed and realistic the story is. Here's a short recap for those of you who aren't aware of the Queen's Gambit phenomenon. The limited series follows the rise of a chess prodigy and orphan, Beth Harmon, played by Anya Taylor-Joy. The Queen's Gambit is based on the novel by Walter Tevis of the same name. So, is it inspired by a true story? Quickly answered, sorry to disappoint you, but it's all fictional. But it is inspired by real-life events. Of course, Beth Harmon is a wholly fictional creation. The Queen's Gambit is based on a 1983 novel of the same name by Walter Tevis, a chess player himself. It follows a chess prodigy on her journey from an orphanage to championships. The series' title is a shout-out to one of the chess moves that Beth studies along the way. Though the story is built around a single individual, it's undoubtedly grounded in history. In an article of the New York Times, chess master Dylan Loeb McLean praised the series for capturing the atmosphere. It was the male-dominated chess scene in the 50s and 60s when teenage Beth rises to fame with painful authenticity. He called the series one of the best and most thriving screen adaptations of the game. Without further ado, here's what you need to know about the real stories around The Queen's Gambit. Beth Harmon is based on a blend of real chess prodigies, including Bobby Fischer. In The Queen's Gambit's acknowledgments, Tevis wrote that he was inspired by grandmasters Robert Fischer, Boris Spassky, and Anatoly Karpov. All of them were active in the chess scene in the 60s when writing the novel. Remarkably, those figures don't appear in the book or the show because they're incorporated into the fictional characters. Of them all, Beth's career most parallels Bobby Fischer's. Born into a poor Jewish family in Brooklyn, Fischer rose to become a household name through the game of chess. His list of achievements resembles Beth's. According to The Guardian, Fischer was the most youthful U.S. master at 14 years and 5 months, the youngest candidate for the World Championship at 15 years and 6 months, and the youngest international grandmaster in his time. Beth and Fisher have more similarities, in addition to being teenage talents. Both studied Russian to prepare for playing there. Both won the U.S. Championship trophy in 1967. Both were tormented by inner demons, Beth by drugs, and Fisher by mental illness. Both were self-sufficient as teenagers. Actually, that's where the similarities end. As he aged, Fisher was as equally represented by his enigma as his chess skills. The Guardian reviews his behavior, which garnered him a bad reputation within the chess community. Fisher was labeled an unbearable diva and a psych-out artist who made life hell for tournament officials and tried to confuse opponents by complaining about, among other things, high-frequency sounds that only he and numerous species of mammals could detect. However, The Queen's Gambit's final episode, where Beth plays Borgov in Russia, clearly imitates Fischer's famous 1972 match against the USSR's Boris Spassky. The New York Times reviewed the match's importance. Fischer's victory was widely seen as a metaphorical triumph of democracy over communism, and it turned the new champion into an absurd and dubious American hero. Fischer ended up with the World Chess Championship before disappearing for 20 years, only to re-emerge to play Spassky again in 1992. Fischer passed away 12 years ago at the age of 64 in Iceland. By the time, he had renounced his US citizenship and had totally devolved into paranoia. When he returned into the public eye, it was only to rage about the world order on radio shows, as NPR writes. Let's hope Beth's story ends on a happier note than Fischer's. 
However, The Queen's Gambit finishes on an open-ended note, with no guarantee of a second season. So who's to say? Walter Tevis also incorporated his strife with addiction into The Queen's Gambit. As a young girl in the orphanage, Beth gets addicted to a fictional sedative called Zanzalan. For this side of her character, Tevis drew from his own contacts with drugs. When I was young, I was diagnosed with having a rheumatic heart and given huge drug doses in a hospital. That's where Beth's drug addiction comes from in the novel, Tevis shared with the New York Times in 1983. Writing about her was purgative. There was some pain, I did a lot of dreaming while writing that part of the plot. But artfully, I didn't allow myself to be self-indulgent. The series' chess matches are modeled off actual games. According to McLean's expert eye, the mind games in the Queen's Gambit's matches are taken from famous competitions over the years. He cites a game in Riga, Latvia in 1955, and a game in the Paris Opera in 1858, for example. Of course, chess novices in the audience, raise your hand at this moment, would never understand the parallels between the show's matches and actual ones. But their similarity demonstrates the Netflix show's subtle intricacies. Like the best sports movies and TV shows, a viewer doesn't need to know anything about the game to enjoy the story. By the end of The Queen's Gambit, you'll learn a little more about chess, but a lot more about human nature and what people can overcome. This is why, ultimately, it doesn't matter that The Queen's Gambit is not based on a true story. It's based on a universal one. You guys know we love hearing your thoughts too, so let us know in the comment section below. What do you think about the Queen's Gambit story? I will be back with more videos about the Queen's Gambit series, so make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an upload. Until next time, take care and stay tuned.